Hey guys, it's Ms. Go here. I will trade you 21 no-code apps that I use in my process every single day to manage my business and also my personal finance for one gentle smash of the like button. All right, I'm sure we've got a deal there. Let's get into it. All right, I have already done a bit of the hard work for you. I have classified all 21 apps into four key categories. Finance, design and building, process, and communication. In finance, I have nine key apps that I use. Half of them are actually for managing money, the other half are for investing. And hopefully this gives you a better idea of which apps I use and why I use them. So the very first app I use is Zero. Zero, I'm paying $65 AUD a month right now. It gives me the best experience for an end-to-end -end accounting software. I used to use FreshBooks, but the features weren't keeping up for a growing business. I started off because I was a freelancer and the money and the numbers I was managing were quite low and the processes weren't as complex and sophisticated. But as the business started to grow, I needed to jump onto zero. And this gives my accountant and also my bookkeeper direct access to all the capabilities and features that they need. So I can do all the payroll, I can manage all the tax, the superannuation, everything is managed for me. So very proud of the New Zealand company. They've done a stellar job and I am also an investor into their stock. So if you guys wanna check out Zero, I highly recommend Zero. In terms of managing my personal finance, so not my business anymore, my personal finance, I use Pocketbook. Pocketbook is the Australian version of mint.com if you're in the States. And I'm not too sure which, what other alternatives there are in Europe and Southeast Asia and all the different countries around the world. But really, the concept of it is it connects um, one app to all my different accounts, and then it'll pull all the data in uh, through an API, and then I can tag them as expenses, I can classify what type of expense it is, and it really helps me just get a high level overview of my budgeting and how I'm spending every single month. I also have a zero sum budgeting approach. So if you are interested in knowing how I save and how I budget for things, then let me know in the comments below or gently smash the like button on this video and I will definitely line it up. The next three apps are used to help me transfer funds all around the world. So first I have Stripe, then I have PayPal, and then I have TransferWise. Stripe is used mostly for all of the digital products that I have. So if I'm selling templates, courses, or even like mentoring, then I normally just go through the Stripe process because it's integrated into some of the platforms and websites that I already have. Then I have PayPal, which is really to purchase any business related items online because I have a business account with a business credit card that is attached to a business PayPal account. That really helps my bookkeeper and my accountant just have all the numbers really clean for the books. Then we have TransferWise and generally TransferWise has, has the lowest fees possible. So that is the platform that I use to pay my team who are working remotely. Now the next four apps I use are really about online trading and stock investments. Yes, this is definitely something I'm very passionate about and I have been for the last couple of years. So I wanna walk you guys through which apps I use to get access to international stocks and also I dabble into a bit of crypto as well. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight. Since I'm based in Sydney, Australia, I do like to trade and invest into companies abroad and outside of Australia's borders. So in Interactive Brokers is definitely my favorite platform to do this. They have extremely low fees, so it's 0.08%. So it's less than a percent, and it's definitely one of the lowest that I could find online. They've also recently went through an entire UX redesign and redevelopment, so they upgraded the entire platform. But the only downfall is for Australians, they don't allow us to automatically reinvest our dividends. They do allow people in Europe and also in the US to do so. So hopefully this feature becomes accessible for Australians like myself. If you wanna check out Interactive Brokers, I've also left a link in the description below. If you sign up, we both get some cool stuff. You get some free stocks, I get some cash. So it's a win-win situation. Now the second app I use in terms of investing is TradingView. TradingView is the perfect product if you actually love to read about businesses, research them, and also do a bit of technical analysis. I'm also on a pro plan, so I pay 126 AUD a year for this product, and it gives me unlimited access to all the different features that they have. It allows me to have multiple tabs opened up for multiple different companies, so I can assess them at the same time. And if you want to check out TradingView, I've got a link in the description below. If you sign up through my referral link, we both get 30 bucks. So it's once again, a win-win situation. 
The third app I use in terms of managing my investments is good old Excel. No, I don't use Google Sheets. I use Microsoft Excel because they are two totally different apps. Excel is a lot more comprehensive, a lot more advanced. And the one thing I love about it is they also have a data link for all the stocks. So they have an API, you can turn on the API and you can actually get live data of all different metrics for specific stocks like stock price, market cap, category. And that allows me to actually have a good overview of my portfolio and I can also craft it myself. I can customize it however I want. And it gives me reassurance and gives me clarity on how my portfolio is going without having to go into specific apps that don't really give me clarity in terms of how my portfolio is actually going on a individual stock basis. Now the fourth app I use in terms of investing and trading is for crypto space. I use Binance to buy and trade all Bitcoins and Ethereum. I made my very first purchase in 2016 through Binance and to this day I still use Binance for all my crypto investments. So if you want to check it out, check out Binance. It is definitely one of the most comprehensive and well-designed platforms and I really like the experience. Hopefully there's a few tools in there that you've never heard of or you, you haven't tried or you've been thinking about trying. Give them a shot and let me know how they go and if they're actually good for you. If you have any other finance apps that you think I should check out, I would love to learn more about them and let me know in the comments below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we are up to the design and building tools and I'm sure you will be interested in hearing this. But the very first one is obviously Figma. I don't really need to talk about it. I've even got a number of uh, crash courses and tutorials. So there's a link up there. Feel free to smash that button to learn more about how, to, how you can get into Figma. But once again, Figma is my hands down, my favorite UI design tool to date. Now, if I want to take my designs and actually build them into real responsive uh, live websites, I could code them because I can code, but I would always now hands down pick Webflow over it. It is so fast, it is so efficient. They've handled all the DNS stuff, they've handled all the launching, they've handled all the FTP issues. You can literally design, build and launch a website within a day. It is insanely incredible. They just raised Series B, they've raised a lot of money so I just can't wait to see what is next for Webflow. Now another tool that you might not have heard of which I use for a lot of my UX processes and strategy is whimsical.com. This product is stellar. It is very snappy, very quick, very efficient and the reason why I don't use Figma when I'm doing a lot of the strategy, the user flows, the sitemaps is because Whimsical is specifically designed for these. You can get started right away. And what I found most useful and why I'm so retained in the product is, it's a great place to just dump all your ideas down really, really quickly. It's very scrappy, it's very efficient, and it's designed specifically for these needs. And then once it's finalized, I will transfer them over and polish them up in Figma. Yes, my design and building tool stack is fairly simple because really, I reckon Figma has done such a stellar job that they've actually just combined all these different apps into one. Back in the days, I would be using Sketch, Envision, and all these random prototyping tools, but now Figma does everything, and I think that is why my design stack has really reduced over the years. Now, in terms of management, I have five key apps that I use every single day. The very first app that I use for just daily documentation is Notion. I haven't yet truly invested everything into Notion just yet. I know they're building out new features, they're building out more capabilities, the templates are becoming more advanced, but I still use Notion as a daily documentation tool and I use other tools to manage more specific tasks like managing the process and entire project and whatnot. So with Notion, I start the day off by just quickly going through what do I need to get done. I also do some mindful journaling every single morning inside Notion. And then I do all my scrappy planning for YouTube content. I also do planning for my courses in Notion. And it's a place for me to really just get thoughts down really quickly. And then once again, I will transfer them out into other, other applications to manage the process. Now to manage all the processes, I still use the good old Trello. I have tried Asana, I have tried Rike, I've tried a lot of different applications, but I still can't justify paying for one of these tools when a lot of the features and complexities around them aren't something I really, really need at this point in time. When I have a project, it's all about how you break down the project effectively and Trello does it extremely well by how you can process it and how you can progress it. Now, the app that I use to manage all the projects and processes, I used to use Rike. 
W-R-I-K-E.com. That is a very expensive uh, project management tool, but it also has a really good capability where you get a high level bird's eye view of all the projects that you're working on. But since moving into 2021, I'm really trying to double down with a key focus on just a few selective projects to really compound the effect of what I'm doing. So in the next few years, these projects actually become a larger vision. I have always been using Trello on the side. It's very, very simple. The custom fields are really simple. I love what they have done. And sometimes when you have a simple tool to use to manage your entire process, it really does make you think of how can I simplify this project as well. So in 2021, I transitioned from Rike over to Trello. And the great thing is it's free. Since I still work with a number of different clients, I do have the occasional signing the NDA and simple contracts. So I use Google Docs for all these scenarios. Whenever I need to sign something simple or I need to create a simple NDA, I use Google Docs because I have a free plugin called Sign Request, which allows me to turn a doc into a file where I can send to a client and they also have the e-signature capability intact. So without having to export it as, as a PDF with e-signature or use DocuSign, which is hella expensive. I use Google Docs, I download the sign request plugin for Chrome, and then I can quickly populate it, send it over to the client, and it's all managed and automated as well. So the only reason why I use Google Docs is because of the sign request capability and plugin, which really does streamline that process. Now to manage my meetings and schedules with the people I mentor, my students, and meetings of clients, I use Calendly. If you haven't heard of it, it's a very good tool to help you schedule all your meetings. You simply just send them a link, they can pick a time and it books it in all automatically for you. You can integrate it with your Zoom, you can integrate it with Meets, uh, Google Meets and it's all automated. And that is why I love Calendly because as you start to grow, you build out the team and you hire more people, you need to start to automate all these different processes. Now the fifth tool under management is all about automation. So I use Zapier to automate all my newsletters, all the people who subscribe on my course or through my newsletter, or if they've inquired uh, for a project through my website, I use Zapier to automatically populate them into MailerLite, which is a newsletter platform that I use in replacement of MailChimp because that's way too expensive. I was paying $250 USD uh, a month because of all, all the subscribers I've got. So I use Zapier to create zaps to automate my processes. If you haven't checked out Zapier, definitely check out Zapier because it can save you so much time if you have little processes that you want to start automating. Now the five last tools are under the communication category. How I actually talk to my clients, how do I communicate with my team, and how do I manage all the different communication channels. Now the very first tool is once again MailerLite. I used to use MailChimp, but I've got around 30,000 uh, designers, creatives, and software engineers in multiple newsletters. So I, I needed to find an alternative that had the same capabilities that was still a good product, but a lot more affordable. So now I use MailerLite, it is a lot more affordable, and they also have a lot more capabilities and features for me to take advantage of. They have everything from the workflow automation, creating templates, they also have all these predefined and designed elements that you can drag and drop into an email template without having to design and build it yourself. So I've been using MailerLite for the last three, four years, and I love it. In terms of email communication, I'm still with uh, Gmail. I haven't seen a reason to really leave Gmail. It works perfectly fine for me. I know there are some alternatives out there. I'm actually curious to hear, do you use Gmail or do you use an alternative? Let me know in the comments below because I have heard that there are issues with Gmail's privacy, but it hasn't affected me just yet. But if you have good alternative, I'd love to check it out. In terms of communication with my team and also my clients, there are three key apps that I use, which predominantly a lot of you guys probably already know of. It is Zoom, Slack, and Discord. I only recently started to use Discord because I had a client in the crypto space. But aside from that, I do keep everything in Slack and also on Zoom with all my virtual and online meetings. So I hope you enjoyed this video. 21 no-code apps to really automate and streamline your processes. Let me know in the comments below if there are any apps that I should definitely check out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a gentle smash of the like button. And if you want to check out any of these apps, I have links in the description below. Some of them are referral links and some are not. So feel free to check them out, have some fun, and I'll see you in another video very, very soon.